And we come to you live from Robert J. Collins Arena for the second of a doubleheader tonight. The men's basketball matchup featuring the number three ranked in the nation, Brookdale Jersey Blues, hosting the Middlesex County College Blue Colts, along with my broadcast partner, Ian Mulhern. My name is Dominic Sama. So, Ian, I want to ask you this. So, with the new national rankings coming up and showing that Brookdale is down from number one and are now the number three ranked team of the nation, what do you think this team needs to do in tonight's game and for the rest of the season if they want to see the continued success going into the home stretch? Well, they, needed, they need to treat it like it's any other game, and they need to play the way they did before, and I think they need to win tonight to bounce back to get that momentum back. The officials tonight are Dick Hecker, Jerome Hubbard, and Nathan Rees as Brookdale starts right away as Nick Williams turns around with a jumper, does not get the lucky roll, and here comes Middlesex. In possession is Emmanuel Davila. Davila averages 10.9 points per game for the Colts. Savion Presley tries to give it over to number 32, George Ra. As Nick Williams shoots the three ball is no good. Middlesex with the possession. Emmanuel Davila giving it over to Vishal Patel called for steps before he makes any other move. Very fast pace game so far. You see a little bit of carelessness by both sides. Brookdale standing at 16 and one overall. Previously the number one ranked team in the nation, but after that loss last Thursday to Atlantic Cape, loss that was 81 to 79, the final result. It downed them to number three nationally. You know, Brookdale overall plays like a number one team, and when you lose like that, sometimes the momentum cuts down. Middlesex with the steal. That's number 11, Savion Presley, trying to give it over to David Silva, but the pass goes away. It was tipped by Nick Williams. Great hustle by Nick Williams and great deflection to stop that fast break. Shout out to the Brookdale cheerleader. <laughs> Seems who is, the ball has disappeared. Yeah, shout out to the Brookdale cheerleader going to grab it for Nick Williams. So here's David Silva giving over to Emmanuel Davila. Davila in possession and defended by Andre Wells. And he goes, looks to go inside, dishes it over. That's number 32, George Ra, and the rebound is made by Williams. Here's Halliburton over to Askew, and he lays it in. Nice feed from Niles Halliburton Beautiful. to open the scoring up. 2-0 over Middlesex. Beautiful find by Niles Halliburton to set up Askew for the basket. Savion Presley looking to go inside, tries to step back on Mateo, puts it up, no good, it was strong. Here's David Silva, the jumper is short, rebound by Halliburton. Brookdale's coming off a very triumphant win over Camden County, 71 to 49 last Saturday as Nick Williams looks to put up the jumper and he gets it. Beautiful shot by Nick Williams right there. As Emmanuel Davila gives it over to David Silva. Presley over to Davila, the three ball from the top of the key. From downtown right there, what a three by Davila right there. Middlesex trying to stay away from hitting 500, hypothetically if they lose tonight. 
They're currently at 10 and 9 overall, 9 and 7 in league play. That's good to be number 7 overall in Region 19 men's hoops. As Darnell Askew, the nice feed from Andre Wells. Great cut by Darnell Askew to get that basket right there. Yeah, Askew has been bringing a consistent game each and every time to the Jersey Blues as Wells and Mateo initiate their stifling defense. Shot was no good. Here comes Andre Wells running the floor. Halliburton at the corner. That's a three ball. No good. The rebound secured by Patel. Patel slows it down and gives it to the point guard, Davila. Savion Presley with the possession. You know, you mentioned this team is 10 and 9, so they have a lot to prove and might give Brookdale a game tonight. Presley gives it back over to Davila. Davila goes inside, puts it up, no good. Nick Williams with the rebound. Here comes Wells. Giving over to Mateo, the captain for three, and he knocks it down. Great, silky smooth stroke by Kevin Mateo to hit that three. And Brookdale up with a nine to three lead early, five minutes into this matchup. Davila running the point for Middlesex. Gives it over to Patel, thinking about the three ball, but here's Davila. He's at the top of your screen, going to the top of the key. Goes inside, rejected by Askew. A two on one for Brookdale. Mateo goes all by himself, lays it in. What a great sequence by Brookdale right there. Great block by Askew and great finger roll by Kevin Mateo. And a timeout early called by the first year head coach, Winston Smith. We'll be right back with more basketball, more men's basketball between Brookdale and Middlesex here on Brookdale TV. And welcome back to Robert J. Collins Arena. Dominic Sama, Ian Mulhern bringing to you this live stream broadcast on Brookdale TV along with this magnificent Brookdale TV crew giving us the helping hand. So Emmanuel Davila looking to give over to Savion Presley. Vishal Patel over to David Silva. Emmanuel Davila swings it over to the leading scorer of Middlesex, Savion Presley. Presley leads scoring with 17.6 per game, while number four, Jared Virto, makes the jumper for Middlesex. And here's Mateo over to Askew, and he gets it. Brookdale really using Askew in the post a lot, and he does a great job of drawing mismatches. Yeah, Askew has a very towering image as a six foot five big for the Jersey Blues, as he just gets that board right there. And there's a three on one. Frantic pass by Wells over to Mateo. Mateo misses the jumper, and Savion Presley has numbers for Middlesex. Davila the three ball from the corner. No good, and a rebound by Vertil. Loose ball, and here's Davila. Had the shot, but gives it over to Vertil for three. He's short, rebound by Mateo. Here's Williams, Euro step, and gets it. Wonderful job by Nick Williams to get to the basket and score there. So this is the first of a two game home stretch this week for Brookdale. Tonight they play Middlesex in just another two days on Thursday. They'll be playing an even more important game versus the number three in the league, Rowan Gloucester, who again holds number three in the league. Wells over to Halliburton, he almost lost the ball. Here's Mateo, clear way inside, puts it up. And it's gonna be called as a charge, an offensive foul on Kevin Mateo. He's confused with the call, as is the Brookdale coaching staff. And the, as always, animated Paul Chizik looking for his 600th career win tonight. Yeah, it seems like he was in the restricted area, but. Hey, 
Yeah, Paul Chizik not happy with the call, still yelling at the referees as that's David Silva going for the shot is no good. Halliburton over to Mateo, he was almost stolen. Askew over to Andre Wells, talk about a nice pass from Askew. Askew doing it all tonight. Wells hit the deck there, but he comes off standing and he will take the two shots at the charity stripe. Ron Flood and Danny Galashevsky on deck for the Jersey Blues. Wells makes the first as, again, Ron Flood and Danny Galashevsky checking in. Flood is checking in for Halliburton. Galashevsky will check in for Wells if he makes this next shot. And he does, so Galashevsky will come in. Wells is 78% from the charity stripe this year. So Emmanuel Davila will bring it up for the Middlesex Blue Colts. Last time these two teams met, the Jersey Blues won handily, 76 to 60, and a 16 point victory. A tad bit competitive over in Edison, but let's see what happens here with Brookdale already up 17 to five. Jared Vertil with a no look shot, puts it up and that's gonna count. Paul Chizek not happy with any of these calls being made by the referees. Yeah, and that was quite a circus shot that that, that was hit. Jared Vertil makes the three-point play to go, and here comes the Jersey Blues. Kevin Mateo, number 11 in the white jersey, leading his Brookdale squad. Nick Williams, the baby jumper, is no good, rattled out. And here is David Silva. Over to Savion Presley. Vishal Patel had some openings. Here is Davila, the three ball, no good. Vishal Patel, he was originally going for a shot, then went for a pass, but. There's a foul on the ground. Foul is on the ground, but they're gonna say it was going up, so Patel will go for two at the line. Halliburton is on deck for the Jersey Blues. He'll check back in. And Middlesex so. is starting to come back here. As Just a little bit as Williams checks out. Halliburton right back in for the Jersey Blues. So Patel is a 75% free throw shooter. They're led by Winston Smith in his first season. Winston Smith is a former St. Patrick's standout player at St. Patrick's High School. Most recently was a former assistant coach at Division I Wagner College out of Staten Island. As Emmanuel Davila takes up the basketball, gives it over to Savion Presley, the leading scorer for three, no good. It was short. Vishal Patel thought about a three. He puts up the floater, no good. Askew the rebound, and he secures it as a foul is going to be called on Jared Vertil. Very physical and competitive game so far. And the newly academically eligible Josiah Basket checking in for the Jersey Blues. Once again, he is newly eligible for this spring semester, so he's been making a lot of noise recently. Actually, the last game that was played against Camden, he led all scores with 18 points, along with the rest of the bench who led the way for Brookdale altogether with 46 out of those 71 made points. Emmanuel Davila going for that shot is no good, and the possession will go right back to the Middlesex Blue Colts. And Brookdale oh. calling timeout here. 
Welcome back to Collins Arena in Lincroft, New Jersey. Brookdale up 17 to 10 on top of the Middlesex Blue Colts. Dominic Sama, Ian Mulhern here with you to bring you this live stream along with the Brookdale TV crew. Here, of course, on Brookdale TV, the Middlesex Blue Colts standing at 10 and nine overall, nine and seven in league play, number seven in region 19 hoops. Last time these two teams met, it was November 22nd in Edison at the home of Middlesex. Brookdale triumphantly won 76 to 60, continuing on their 15 game winning streak that would eventually end in their 16th game against Camden. And Jared Vertil making the baseline jumper, saying a couple things to the Brookdale bench and called right away for a technical. Way too easy of a call for the referees. Yeah, that's just poor sportsmanship right there. And this could cost Middlesex, and this could be a huge part of the game. Yeah, not even Coach Winston Smith is happy with what Jared Vertil did after he made that shot. I think the big thing that we learned from these mistakes is just keep playing and not worry about the emotions that come with it. One play and one game at a time. As someone once said to me, just play the game. Right. So Kevin Mateo is at the line to shoot these technical free throws. Couple of fun facts about the Middlesex Blue Colts. Their last game was against Montgomery of Pennsylvania. They lost Thursday, last Thursday the 19th. They lost to Montgomery 62 to 50. And Manuel Davila, as he is starting off in this game, he led in last game two with a double-double with 15 points and 13 assists. Vishal Patel, coming close with nine points and seven rebounds. Before the Montgomery loss, they enjoyed a six game winning streak and they're currently on a, the second of a three game road swing. Now the big thing that we have to look for in this game, Ian, and I think we've already seen with Davila and Presley is that Davila, Presley, and Patel, who are all, all three are on the floor, they're the, basically a three-headed scoring monster. Oh, yeah. They yeah. average altogether 44 or 64 points per game for the team altogether. As you saw Halliburton there making the baby jumper to go, making it 21 to 12 for the Jersey Blues. Patel back over to Davila. And now, so, and now the question is, can this Middlesex team continue their momentum and continue to be competitive against the Jersey Blues as that results in a backcourt violation with the pass coming from Presley over to Davila of the same team. Wells checking back in for the Jersey Blues, Mateo checking out. Currently on the floor also is a newcomer to Brookdale, number 30, Josiah Basket, who has been making a lot of noise lately with his leading of all scores in the previous game against Atlantic Cape with 18 points. Niles Halliburton loses the handle and here comes Emmanuel Davila all the way for a transition layup. And trimming the Brookdale lead to seven. The question here, Ian, is will they be able to keep it competitive all throughout this game and be within striking distance? And Right now, it seems like that is the case with another steal from number 13, David Silva. Now, this is an offensive charge on Savion Presley, so the possession will go right back to the Jersey Blues. Yeah, and finally, something goes the Jersey Blues way with that offensive foul right there. And the real momentum killer so far for Middlesex was that technical foul. So again, like we said before, Niles Halliburton, who made the shot before, missed it before, and now Nick Williams making that layup to go to extend this Brookdale lead to nine. 23 
to 14. Presley over to Davila. Davila is at the top of the key, dishes to Patel at the free throw line. Patel thinking about the shot, he was double teamed. Presley going inside, taking the baseline, putting it up, no call. Halliburton securing the possession. Brookdale coming down, and here's Nick Williams putting it up, no good. Rebound secured by Basket. And here is Andre Wells, short on the three ball, and a foul call that looks to be on Middlesex. And it will. Emmanuel Davila guilty of the charge. His first personal, team's fifth foul of the game. Josiah Basket getting the inbound from Wells, putting it up and blocked away. No call from the refs. Here's Emmanuel Davila over to Presley. That's a three, and he knocks it down. Beautiful three by Presley right there. And it is now a six-point lead for Brookdale. Here's Josiah Basket over to Halliburton. And now Basket thinking about the three, but contested. Here's Williams back over to Wells. Halliburton at the free throw line. Nick Williams thinking about the three ball, but takes his time. And now here's Wells. Devin Strickland in the game, and he knocks down the free throw, Jay. Beautiful free throw jumper by Devin Strickland right there. 25-17, Brookdale on top. We're at the seven and a half minute mark. This game is a roller coaster ride. Tavila with a contested three ball is no good. Basket secures the rebound. And now that may not be the case. Halliburton tries to dish over to Basket. And here is Nick Williams. Basket takes the three ball, knocks it down. Josiah Basket continuing to make noise in January. Josiah Basket with a wonderful three-point basket right there. No pun intended. Presley, the three ball, no good. And here is Wells with the board. And here is Josiah Basket. And he's got five points just like that. Yeah, as you said, Dom, five straight points right there in less than 30 seconds. I think the biggest thing that we see with Josiah Basket is once he starts with one, he might be coming for more and look at him with the possession again. He's got numbers. It's a three on two. Basket over to Halliburton. Strickland looks at go inside with nothing but contact and gets it in. Thirty-two to seventeen, Brookdale with a fifteen-point lead over Middlesex, starting to open up this lead now against the Colts. And there's another steal by Brookdale, three on none, and Basket gets the credit for the bucket. And that is just seven points this quarter. Five fifty left to go. In this first half of play, Middlesex calling a quick timeout, 34 to 17, Brookdale on top. We'll take a quick step back here. We'll be right back with more basketball for you here on BTV. Welcome back to Monmouth, Monmouth County, excuse me, 34 to 17, Brookdale on top of the Middlesex Blue Colts, Dominic Sama, Ian Mulhern, the very passionate fan of Stephen A. Smith here with you to bring you this live stream broadcast on Brookdale TV. Again, Brookdale doubling the score of Middlesex 34 to 17 with five and a half minutes to go. As Middlesex has the possession, fight for the ball. There's gonna be a held ball possession remaining with the men in blue, Middlesex. Well, this Brookdale team has been gaining momentum based off of Middlesex's careless turnovers. Couple of new check-ins as they 
Get a shot clock violation here, and Brookdale taking back the possession. Middlesex having number 15, Aiden Gorenby Kelly, and Bryson Henry checking in for the Colts. Nick Williams going inside, taking the baseline. Jay off the backboard. And here is Askew and can't secure the rebound, so Middlesex will take back the possession. Yeah. You gotta give you gotta give this Brookdale team credit. They were up by seven and increased it to seventeen. And another steal by Devin Strickland takes it all the way himself in transition, but still stolen away. But not before a foul is called for that reach in by number five, Emmanuel Davila, the Edison native. Kevin Mateo checking back in for Devin Strickland. Andre Wells set to inbound right under the basket. And out Darnell asks you the nice feed from Wells. Make it 36 to 17. Vishal Patel back over to Emmanuel Davila. Davila over to Patel. Patel will take the jumper from the wing and rattles at home. That ends Middlesex's cold spree. 36 to 19, Brookdale remaining on top. Here's Mateo over to Wells. Back over to Nick Williams. He'll put it up and lay it in from the baseline. Great job by Nick Williams using his size and scoring the layup right there. Manuel Davila over to Goran B. Kelly. And now Patel back over to Davila. Davila kicks it to Patel. That's a top of the key three ball for Patel and he is starting to heat up. Nothing but net for Patel on that one. Basket at the top of your screen on the right-hand side. Wells and Mateo and now Askew and Basket another three. No good. Williams the rebound and he puts it in. So Williams starting to make some more noise for the Jersey Blues. That is, Nick Williams is not a player that you want heating up because once he starts scoring, he doesn't stop. And another steal by the stifling Brookdale defense. Mateo with putting the ball right under his legs. Back behind him was Darnell Askew, and he tried to get the bucket. But Darnell Askew was called for steps. So Emmanuel Davila will look to go all the way inside, kicks it to Gorham B. Kelly for three. That's an air ball. Askew the rebound, and here is Mateo over to basket. He'll look to take a baseline basket. No good. Mateo back over to basket again. Kicks it to Danny Galaszewski. Josiah basket for three. He's got 10. Nothing but net on that one for Josiah basket. That is 10 points for basket. Emmanuel Davila with the possession. He's back at the logo, defended by Kevin Mateo. Davila looking to show off against Nick Williams, but Nick Williams gets his cookies. However, it is a foul called. And, and yes, Nick Williams did get his cookies, plus the foul on Number five, Emmanuel Davila, that's his third of the game. Williams, who has 10 points, will go to the line for a one and one. So Middlesex over the limit with seven fouls. So from here on out, Brookdale having an opportunity for free throws, this being a one and one for Nick Williams. And he gets the one, will get the one more with this next bucket from the charity stripe. This is his chance at 12 points. 
Timmy Jombala, the native from Brooklyn, New York, originally from Montenegro. He will be checking in for the first time today, as is number 42 of Middlesex, Maximus Negron. Williams splitting the pair at the free throw line. Emmanuel Davila over to Bryson Henry. This is Davila over to Patel. Another three ball, and he gets it. Beautiful. Another beautiful three by Patel. As he said, he's starting to heat up. Kevin Mateo almost got stolen. Devin Strickland, the baseline J, nothing but net. Devin Strickland saying right back at you with that basket. Manuel Davila with his team down by 21. Vishal Patel looking to give it over. Davila the three, way too strong, and Galashevsky securing the board. Mateo with great awareness, trying to give it over to Nick Williams for an alley-oop, but stolen away by Middlesex. Bryson Henry tried to pass it to Patel, but Galashevsky got the steal. Here is Williams, Euro step all the way to the bucket. Take a look at the replay and a great move by Nick Williams. We're under a minute to go, 45 seconds specifically in the first half of play. 48-25, Brookdale on top, and it continues for Brookdale with Devin Strickland, a transition layup. Beautiful steal by Devin Strickland right there to get the basket. And now Brookdale is up by 25 points. Emmanuel Davila. Looking to keep it for Middlesex. Two second difference between shot clock and game clock. And with that basket by Strickland, he is now up to eight points. Vishal Patel, another jumper, and this time he's in double digits. Nick Williams will look to respond with a three ball, and it's short. And that will end your first half of play. The Brookdale Jersey Blues with 50 and the Middlesex County College Blue Colts with 27. Middlesex will look to come back in the second half of play against Brookdale, again, with 50, and Middlesex with 27. So we'll be right back after the intermission and come back with the second half of play for you here on Brookdale TV. Don't go anywhere. And we're back inside the Robert J. Collins Arena for the second half of Middlesex versus Brookdale. Again, here in Monmouth County, New Jersey. I'd like to welcome back Brian Gows Gowsward to the panel with yours truly, Dominic Sama, as Nick Williams goes for the three ball and misses it short. So the rebound was made by Middlesex, and now Manuel Davila will take the possession. Davila giving it over to David Silva, looks to put it up, no good. And Williams will take the rebound. He's got numbers. Andre Wells takes it under. Now back over to Mateo. Halliburton thought about the shot. Askew over to Williams. The corner three ball is good. I think they ruled it a long two-pointer there for Williams, who paced the Jersey Blues leading the way. It was a well-rounded first half for Brookdale. And now Williams up to 15 points on the evening. Yeah, and another wild card player now is Josiah Basket, who comes off the bench already with 10 points. But we'll talk about him a little bit later as Vishal Patel misses the three ball. He's been leading the way for Middlesex with 11. Here's Wells and midair pass, couldn't get it to Askew. Jared Verdell over to Savion Presley. The leading scorer of Middlesex goes up and gets fouled by Askew. Yeah, Presley made one three-pointer in the first half, but you brought up Basket, and you know, what an addition to this team for the second half of the year, a guy who can shoot it the way he does. I mean, his skills were on full display. We didn't even see him until about 10 minutes into the game, and all of a sudden he was in double-figure scoring within a couple of minutes. Yeah, Savion Presley here going for the bucket. He Makes the first, he averages 17.6.
Middlesex Blue Colts and averages 79% from the free throw line. But going back to basket, he led all scores in the previous game, the last game that they played against Camden County College down south in Camden with 18 points. Not only did he lead Brookdale, he led all scores. As Niles Halliburton pulls up with a free throw, Jay from the left elbow. Yeah, that's just a smooth looking jumper there for Halliburton looking up, seeing no one a random and able to hit the mid-range jumper with ease. Emmanuel Davila will take the possession up against Wells. Here's Vishal Patel putting it up. No good, but a foul call and he'll have an opportunity for two at the line. And like I said in the beginning of the game, Brian, uh, Davila, Presley, and Patel are basically a three-headed scoring monster with averaging 44 of the 64.3 total points per game by the Colts. And that's base, that's well over half the, half the points. Yeah, that's the problem is it's good to get contributions from those three players, but they're not getting enough from the supporting cast to make this team as viable as they can be. Let's see if Savion Presley can continue this tear as he just made that floater to go, that pretty floater. To make it 51 to 31, trims the Brookdale lead to 23. And Nick Williams from the baseline. I'll tell you, Nick Williams sometimes just makes this game look easy, doesn't he? He's just got such a smooth release on the jumper, can shoot the three, can get to the basket. Just such a weapon for Paul Cheesek's group. 18 points for Nick Williams, the native out of Patterson, New Jersey. As a timeout is called. And we will keep it here for just for now. Again, 56-31 Brookdale on top of the Middlesex Blue Colts. And again, the Blue Colts were enjoying a six game winning streak against, or a six game winning streak altogether before their loss to Montgomery, which was the previous game before this one. Currently they're on a second of a three game road swing. And Manuel Davila, who's the point guard of the Middlesex Blue Colts, averaging the most assists on average 4.4 assists per game. He runs the floor for the Blue Colts along with Savion Presley, the leading scorer. Jared Vertil, who's also on the floor, Vishal Patel, and Silva. Jared Vertil trying to put it up, rejected by Nick Williams, but ends up in the hands of David Silva and capitalizing on the jumper. You know, I mentioned that Williams sometimes can make the game easy. I was mostly highlighting his offensive prowess, but there you see the emphatic rejection. And Middlesex taking back the possession, looking to go on a tear here. Brookdale haven't, hasn't scored in about a couple minutes, but Kevin Mateo, the one-handed jam. So give Mateo nine points. Now as you see him going uncontested and throwing that one down with authority. Nick Williams almost got a steal, but David Silva, the mid-range off the back iron. It looks like a push called on Jared Vertil. Check that, that's gonna be on number 13, David Silva. That's his first of the game. And Middlesex's first team foul. Yeah, and I think I think you mentioned it in the previous broadcast regarding Brookdale dropping from the number one team to number three and how that would bother a guy like Paul Cheesa, because you know him, he's a perfectionist, and that's something that he looks up there and sees his team's no longer number one. He's gonna be determined to get them back on track. And boy, were they back on track, along with Josiah Basket leading the way in that game against Camden. They won 71 to 49, and not only did Josiah Basket lead all scores with 18, but you had the majority of the bench leading the way in scoring altogether. 46 out of 71 points made by the Brookdale bench. And boy, does that put a happy face on Brookdale fans everywhere. And of 
course, Paul Cheswick's phase two. Yeah, and, and that's something that's a hallmark of this team for years. It, it's never about one player. You know, Brookdale has some good individual players like Nick Williams and others, but it very much is a team where they can go 10 deep on a given day and have all 10 players get on the score sheet. Nick Williams continuing to go on the tear as he gets that turnaround baby jumper, makes it 60 to 33. Yes, he hits 20 points even now and you get a middle six turnover on the other end. And at this point, without a middle sex comeback, it would be all but certain that Paul Chizek, the head coach of the Jersey Blues, 32 years into this great job that he will be hitting 600 wins tonight, adding on to the huge milestone in the previous game with Rich Brunson, the women's basketball coach, getting 100 career ones. Yeah, it's kind of funny the way it works out with both coaches potentially getting a big milestone on the same day. Yeah, Nick Williams missing that jumper to go, and here comes number 24, Bryson Henry. Savion Presley, nice pass over to Silva, but not before he's blocked away from behind by Mateo. And Mateo is a, a six foot two guard, but getting up there, showing the hops, getting the blocked shot. See Devin Strickland come in, and he was a factor in the first half, putting up eight points. And a big thing for Brookdale now is the big thing is just keep winning. That's the key for the rest of the season. Keep on winning and don't trip up because right now not only are they closely number one as number five, Emmanuel Davila making that three ball to go. But the big thing is they have Northampton right behind them. Not only are, is Northampton number two in region 19, but they're number six nationally compared to number three, Brookdale. So they cannot afford any mistakes or any losses for the home stretch of the season. That includes two days from now when they host Rowan of Gloucester, who happens to be number three, standing at 15 and six overall. Yeah, we talked about how big of a game it is on the women's side, but every game big for Brookdale when they're trying to compete with the best teams, not only in the region, but the entire nation. And they have their sights set on a national title, so every game is big, obviously. Mateo short on the three. Bryson Henry just made that layup recently for Middlesex as Devin Strickland responds with a layup of his own to extend this Brookdale lead 62 to 38. 14 minutes to go in the game. Brookdale expanding this lead comfortably as David Silva makes the response. 62 to 40, Brookdale with a 22 point lead over the Middlesex Blue Colts. We'll take a step back here and be right back with more basketball for you. 14 minutes of more basketball here on Brookdale TV. Welcome back to Linkcroft, Robert J. Collins Arena in Linkcroft, New Jersey. Kevin Mateo over to Strickland and now Halliburton, the corner three ball knocks it down. 65 to 40. Brookdale all over the Middlesex Blue Colts as Savion Presley kicks it over to Emmanuel Davila. Davila steps it back from the top of the key over to the logo. Defended by Danny Galashevsky and stolen away by Devin Strickland. This is too easy and he'll look to dunk it home. That was Devin an Strickland. Ex explosive move by Strickland, just getting to the basket like a blur and the emphatic throwdown. And the response from Emmanuel Davila. And here comes Brookdale, Josiah, basket on deck. Timmy Jombala, no good on the bucket. Here's Davila. Davila going inside, putting up no good. Joan Bala securing the board. And kicking it over to almost nobody. I'm not sure who Joan Bala thought he had there, but there was nobody in the vicinity. 
Listen, sometimes you can think that you have somebody in your peripheral vision, but then you don't. That happens every now and then to all of us. It's like so. when a quarterback and wide receiver are not on the same page. So I think for just for this time, we'll give John Bala a break. <laughs> As Savion Presley knocks down a three ball and trims the bucket to, or trims the score to 67 to 45. Galashevsky stepping back against Patel. Here's Mateo over to Galashevsky and here's Joan Bala putting up the jumper off the back iron and here comes Middlesex. Davila over to Savion Presley. And the pass is stolen away by Josiah Basket, newly checked into the game and here is Devin Strickland again. Strickland just playing so well. We've seen him with two dunks in this game, and that time opting to just finish it off easily with the layup. 69 to 45, Brookdale on top of Middlesex. We've got 11 and a half minutes to go in this game as Savion Presley is looking to make a play here and puts up the shot against Kevin Mateo. As you can hear from the crowd and the Brookdale bench, very very in much disagreement with the referee's call of the shooting foul. Yeah, that's uh, not the first time that we've heard a disagreement in this game. It's It's been the animated version of Paul Chizek, but on that particular play, I think Kevin Mateo thought clearly he got all ball. So. Yeah, with the, with the hands on his head, yeah, you can see Paul Chizek is incredulous with the call, but the referees always get the final call either way. Savion Presley splitting the pair, and Devin Strickland rejecting Jared Vertil as Emmanuel Davila lays it in to trim the Brookdale lead now to 21. Kevin Mateo looking to go inside. Mateo taking it back out, almost picked away by Presley. Over to Galashevsky. Strickland, Jombala, Galashevsky, too strong on the three. Here's Davila. Presley looking to go inside and hit the deck, and he is shaken up. So the Brookdale athletic trainer will come out to see if Presley is holding up well. And Presley was just slow to get up, but he will go for two at the free throw line. Yeah, I'll tell you, when he first went down, it looked like he was in a considerable amount of pain. Good to see that he was able to get to his feet as quickly as he did and pronounces himself good enough to shoot from the line. And he'll make the first. Yeah, so Presley, again, he leads scoring for Middlesex with 17.6 points per game. As Brookdale takes back possession, Josiah Basket with the possession. Gives it over to Askew. He'll go for the shot, no good. And a rebound by Silva, and here comes Davila. Vishal Patel was on a roll in the first half of play. Davila trying to make a play, has a double screen, tries to come off of it. He'll go inside, puts it up, blocked by Basket. And the possession will go to the Jersey Blues. I think it's fair to characterize Basket as a three and D player, as you see there the blocked shot. and. I've already seen his three-point shooting on display. What a valuable piece he's going to be in these important games down the stretch. And must I say again, put simply, he is not only with the last name Basket, but again, he is a walking basket. It's like a, if a football player was named Touchdown. 
as Basket himself gets the corner three. So Thank give you. him 13 points now on the evening. As Davila tries to lead the way for Middlesex. Gives it over to Presley. Tries to go inside, putting it up from the free throw line. No good. Askew the rebound, and here is Wells. Over to Strickland, and Askew losing the possession. Presley with numbers, but losing possession again. Kareem Irby, Irby newly checked in, losing himself. And Vishal Patel capitalizing on the loose ball. And Paul Chizek looking a little bit exasperated on the Brookdale sideline with a little bit of sloppy play there from his team. Yeah, that the possession arrow probably looked like a pinball machine throughout the whole thing. Irby over to Askew and his first attempt no good. Second attempt is no good. Secures his own board. Here's Wells going inside the Euro step and count the basket and the foul. And nice job by Wells there, taking his time, getting to the basket, knew exactly what he wanted to do. Gets the hoop and the harm. As a check in for Middlesex, Bryson Henry checking in for Vishal Patel. And Andre Wells at the charity stripe to convert the three point play. Brookdale holding a 22 point lead. And it will stay 22 with the miss from Wells. Just with the unlucky bounce there. Emmanuel Davila. He averages 10.9 points per game for the Blue Colts. Presley, the three, knocks it down from the top of the key. And yeah, Presley has been the number one weapon today, shooting the three for the Blue Colts, but not enough factors besides him to keep Middlesex in this game. And the whistle from the referee is going to be a foul on Middlesex. It's going to be on Jared Vertil. That's his fourth personal, so one more and he's gone. And the fourth team foul overall for Middlesex in this second half of play. We're at the eight minute mark in the second half as Andre Wells gives it over to Josiah Basket. He looks to go inside, spins around, puts it up, lays it in. Nice move by Josiah Basket, my goodness. Yeah, Basket, not only the ability to shoot, showing there he can get to the rim, so he is a complete player on the offensive side. Continuing on his tear in the month of January, coming in from being finally eligible to play in the spring semester. Here's Kareem Irby, who looks to put it up, no good. Here's Patel over to Presley. Savion Presley looking to put it up. No good and no call from the referees. Possession will stay with Middlesex. 22 seconds on the shot clock. So Davila over to Presley. Presley using the jab step, putting it up from the backboard, no good, but the recovery made by Bryson Henry. Yeah, nice job by Henry there, crashing the offensive glass and getting the follow with two hands. Josiah Basket over to Askew, and now Strickland kicks it to Irby. Great movement all around by the Jersey Blues as Andre Wells misses the three ball. It was short and no shot, it's gonna be an on the floor foul looks to be on Josiah Basket. And they called it before the shot, so they will have it underneath the basket. Last possession, the Wells missed the three, but you gotta love the ball movement. Lead to a wide open shot. Wells just couldn't get it to fall. Patel up against Basket. That's a interesting matchup as 
Askew gets the board, and here comes Irby. He's got numbers with Strickland and Basket right behind him. And that will be an and one for Kareem Irby. So count the basket and the foul for Kareem Irby. That's his first points of the game. Makes the Brookdale lead back up to 21, 78 to 57, and he'll go for a third point at the free throw line. Yeah, so previously it was Wells who had an end one opportunity, converted on it, and now Irby does. A 22 point lead for the Jersey Blues. Trying to hold this lead before Middlesex thinks about doing anything pertaining to storming back with this kind of score and six and a half minutes to go. Plenty of time for a team to storm back from 20 points down. Another foul called. It looks to be on Josiah Basket. So that's his second foul of the game, six-team foul for Brookdale. Bryson Henry gets picked away. Loose ball. And Vishal Patel takes it. And another foul call. This will be on Devin Strickland. That means Brookdale will be over the limit. They wrecked up several fouls here and short order, hoping that it won't matter because they have such a comfortable lead at 22. Vishal Patel making the first basket to go from the charity stripe. Darnell Askew was actually called for that foul, not Strickland. So Askew will have three fouls in the stat sheet as Patel goes for the second free throw to go. He averages 75% from the free throw line. Irby thinking about it, gives it over to Galashevsky. Danny Galashevsky with the possession, gives over to Halliburton, and here's Strickland with traffic. Yeah, great cut to the basket by Strickland, and maybe even a better pass. The vision from Halliburton right around the foul line finds him perfectly, that's well executed. Davila with the possession. Here's Patel, pulls up and no good. Brookdale has numbers, it's a three on two. Niles Halliburton thought about the three. Galashevsky, Halliburton, Strickland. Back to Galashevsky, he'll go inside, no good. And a rebound by Silva. Over to Presley, he'll pull up for three. And it's short and it will go in the possession of Brookdale. Hey, Matt, we have a camera up over the glass and the ball made contact with that camera. So we'll see the result of that very soon. Danny Galashevsky with the possession for the Jersey Blues. Over to Kareem Irby. Irby over to Galashevsky and now Irby going inside and throwing it near basket, but not to basket, so the possession will go back to Middlesex. Yeah, that's the second time there's been a pass that's been sorted to no one in particular. I mean, that when you make note that basket, at least in the area code, unlike the previous one where the ball went to just nobody. Happens to the best of us. Patel gives it over to Silva. This is Davila and an illegal screen on Middlesex. Actually, check that. That's going to be a foul on Kareem Irby. So that's Brookdale's eighth foul of the game. So that means a one and one for Bryson Henry. He'll miss the one, so Brookdale will take the possession. Strickland had the rebound. Josiah Basket thinking about shooting it. And now he will from the top of the key. Savion Presley the rebound. Presley, Presley will look to take it back to the three-point line. Up against Basket. 
is over to Davila. That's a three ball, and he'll knock it down for the corner. Middlesex doesn't have trouble shooting the three. I mean, they've done that pretty well. They just can't get enough stops on the defensive end, and Brookdale's been able to keep this one out of striking distance. Yeah, and with less than four minutes to go, it seems to be all but out of reach for them. Down by 19 against the number three ranked team nationally. Galashevsky with a frantic three, no good. Here's Davila all by himself. All he needed to do was go up against Galashevsky. So the Brookdale lead now down to 17. Here's Irby giving it over to Strickland. Basket wide open at the corner. And here's Galashevsky, the offensive board, blocked away by Patel. And here's Davila, it's a two on one. Davila putting it up and laying it in. So Middlesex now down by only 15, so maybe they are within reach. Just over three minutes to go. We'll take a step back here as Brookdale calls time and talks it over in order to hold this lead for the rest of the game. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Robert J. Collins Arena in Lincroft, New Jersey for Middlesex and Brookdale. The final three minutes of regulation. Middlesex starting to come back a little bit, now only down by 15 against the number three nationally ranked in the nation, Brookdale Jersey Blues, along with my broadcast partner, Brian Goudsward, I'm Dominic Sama. Happy to bring to you this live stream along with the magnificent Brookdale TV crew. Again, here on BTV. Now, Brian, what have you seen that's been the catalyst to Middlesex coming back and now Brookdale needing to hold this lead in order to um, hold this win as Devin Strickland lays that bucket in? Yeah, nice tip in there by Strickland with the right hand. But yeah, Brookdale just needs to close this one out, make sure they get enough stops. Middlesex has hit a couple of threes. They've gotten that in transition, so they've been able to get closer. Brookdale, though, still up 17. Another foul called by the refs. This is going to be on Brookdale. And it's going to be another on-the-floor foul, so one and one for Emmanuel Davila. Kareem Irby guilty of the call as Darian Cabrera checking checks in for the Brookdale Jersey Blues for the first time today. He wears number three in white. Davila missing the first of one. And it's gonna be a foul called on Jared Vertil. And that is his final foul of the game. That's the final straw he will step out. He has fouled out of the game. Great showing by Vertil tonight, despite the score. Danny Galashevsky with the possession gives it over to Cabrera. Here's Strickland and Halliburton losing the possession. And here is Silva. Check that Davila over to Savion Presley, but not before he's called for traveling. And Jabala checks in for Brookdale. I'd like to see him be a little get be a little bit more involved on the offensive side. He has such a nice touch and a mid-range jumper, but season has been kind of filled with ups and downs. And we have Luis Robledo checking in for the Jersey Blues. The Jersey City native, a 6'3 freshman guard coming in for Brookdale as look at the Euro step by Josiah Basket, but he can't finish. So Middlesex will take back the possession. Savion Presley, the three ball off the back iron. They just can't get a bucket here to keep the comeback coming tonight. Yeah, at this point, Brookdale should just eat away at the clock, although they opt not to. 90 seconds to go in this game, 83-66. They're up by 17 as Jombala secures that board. 
Here's Cabrera going inside, and he loses the possession. Possession will remain with Brookdale. So let's just discuss the fact that, I mean, we discussed this earlier, but talk about a coincidence that uh, Brookdale women's basketball head coach Rich Brunson, who sits behind the scoring table with his wife, the cheerleading coach, um, Coach Thornton, uh, him getting 100 wins tonight uh, on his career as a head coach, and now Paul Chizek on the verge of winning 600 games as a head coach in his career in Brookdale. You know, that's a huge thing, and a, it's a huge night tonight for Brookdale. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, we saw a good effort by the women's team in the first game, and now the men equally so and for Paul Chizik who has been around for so long and I guarantee if you were to ask him about that achievement he would say it's a product of being around for a long time to see Jambala miss the dunk but he has really done a remarkable job with this program consistently they are up among the leaders in the region 19 they've won championships they're always ready to play they're always ready to be feisty and that's just a credit to his coaching, his personality that gets through to his team year in and year out. And not only his personality, but we have to also give credit to the assistant coaches, uh, John Rivera, Ron Pastore, uh, Kurt Fenchel, and John Rivera, who all contribute a, a lot to this program. And you know, give kudos to them, give kudos to the players who are, dedicate themselves throughout the whole season. So this is a monumental win for the Jersey Blues as the shot clock turns off, and that will most likely be your final score, 83 to 68. But again, 600 wins for Brookdale head coach Paul Chizek. And not only that, but the big thing for them is that they have to look to Thursday now and move to Thursday in a more competitive matchup against the Rowan of Gloucester Roadrunners, which both the women's and men's basketball team will play. The women's basketball team of Brookdale at number three in the league, while Rowan's women's, Rowan women's basketball program stands at number one in Region 19. The other way around for Brookdale. Brookdale at number one, Rowan at number three. So either way, a hugely competitive double header to look forward to Thursday. I know Brian and the crew will do a fantastic job Thursday night to bring you this coverage on Brookdale TV.